delivered to me momentarily. This is Debbie Brown, and I'm the bonus vote for 30. adjustment to the uh, proxy. Um, I'm back and uh, I will take the chair and we'd like to make our vice chair proxy for Karen Perry. So we need to make an adjustment on the proxy. Here. Here, and if I have to 
Delegate. Evan Cutler. Here. Tuckerman Babbitt. Yes. Stephanie Madison? Madison. Madison. Linda Adams? John Angerman? Brent Schultz. Brent Cole? Yeah. George Craig? Steve Minow. Minow, he left.
I can actually talk louder because my group knows that. So we, we had a really great group with uh, I don't I don't need that. Thank you. Um, we had a great group, a very diverse group with representation across the board, male, female, districts, uh, all the various districts. A lot of very hard hard work. I think this is the hardest work to do. They did business and registration. Uh, really an awesome group to work with. And uh, all of the table captains and the, the, the committee members, uh, they had a very orderly conducting of the vote with agreement at the table as to what the count was and all verification of what's put up on the board and verify the numbers. And so everybody's in agreement as to their results. The results are for chair, Elledge, 203 votes at 46%. Millet, 242 votes at 54 percent. <laughs> Vice Chair, the results are 100 and the breeze, 109 at 24 percent. Brown, 231 at 52 percent. Lytle, 105 at 24 percent. Brown is elected.
and I think the most important part about that is the Credentials Committee got an awful lot of stuff done in a very, very short time on the second round of counseling. Thank you very much. This meeting with with general uh, friendship and, and lack of animosity. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
Several years ago, we gave a pledge to a lady's blouse. So, so. I asked Robert Venables to lead us the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This is a very limited agenda. I don't plan to keep you. I ask for a motion to approve this agenda. Mr. I'm sorry, it's been distributed around the room. Let me give you a couple copy. Yeah. Uh, you no, know, I have an immediate uh, amendment to the agenda. Okay. Uh, so the change all the time. Amen. That's very good. I, I had not contemplated that because I mentally have a pre programmed. What time would you suggest to make the adjournment time? I this is a brief meeting, maybe. Uh, what time is it now, Mike? Okay. So, you think 30, 30 minutes? What we say? 30 minutes from now? Okay. Everybody in favor of that amendment, if you keep saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, you want to offer some of the intermediate types? Let's see. 6.50. Um, I think we just work back incrementally here. Uh, go to uh, 645. Yeah, 645 for now. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Chris, okay. um, 10 minutes earlier would be 5, 6.35. And 20 minutes earlier than that would be uh, 6.15. And uh, 15 minutes before that would be 6 o'clock. Just get the cap. Would you? I, I, 6 o'clock, uh, so it already happens. Yep. Okay, yeah, uh, that sounds about right. Okay. You moved. You second? Yeah. All in favor, indicate saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Question? I have a motion. Okay. While we're in the new business section, I want to make a motion. I motion that the SEC hold a special state convention. Of the special state convention, I place agenda and policy determined by the SEC. I motion that the SEC calls a special state convention with the time, place, agenda, and call to be determined by the SEC. And if I get a second, I'll speak to that. Second. Second. Name a district. Thank you. 
After discussion with the maker of the motion, I would suggest that he just withdraw it rather than be ruling it out of order. Is that fair? Thank you. Uh, and then we'll work through and get in this song. Part two. Anything else? Okay. The, uh, to minimize impact on activities, I would appoint and ask for your confirmation of Glenn Clary as treasurer to to serve the Alaska Republican Party. Is there a motion to appoint? And to confirm. You're confirmed my appointment, right? Yes. Okay. Second. From Andy Clary, District 24. Sir. Uh, just a discussion. Is this just to the continuation of your term in the chair, or does our new chair get to appoint or, or suggest his My understanding at this time, he is chair elect, I am chair. Right. I would continue this as long as I'm in that activity and therefore I'm not going to appoint any new people. Okay. Would he get the privilege then of offering a new name at that point? Whatever. Okay. So because the, the, the treasurers are replaced at the will of the chair with the confirmation of the subject okay. I think that's absolutely consistent with everything I know about the rules. Okay. Uh, all in favor of this motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Moving on to the second piece of this puzzle, the appointment and confirmation of the assistant uh, treasurer. I would appoint Frank McQuarrie if he will tolerate doing this for further. Uh, I see no objection there. Do I have a motion to confirm Frank's appointment? I move. So moved. Uh, moved by Kurt Wickersham, seconded by Andy Clary. Is that fair? Uh, District 16 and District 24, respectively. Um, all in favor and keep saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Thank you. The, the result is Mr. Mr. Uh, McQuarrie is confirmed as assistant treasurer, and I will go back and just state that for the record in case I didn't. Thank you. If you need to, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you for your work as, as, as our secretary.
parliamentarian and keep us saying aye? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to reappoint the, what I would call, active finance chairs at this time. <laughs> the other one vacant. If we can find a victim, I will bring that name forward. Uh, for Region 1, Paulette Simpson. For Region 2, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I just had a, I don't know, point of order or, or witness, but I was in and out doing various things. Did, did we ever change any rules that says? No, that we didn't adopt any rules. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. That's why my, my, my agenda says contingent on what we did. We didn't do, therefore, we do not as yet have regional vice chairs. Okay, oh, oh, okay, you're doing regional vice chairs. Okay. Okay, I'm doing regional finance vice chairs. That's, that's what I meant. Okay. And, and that would be. Ms. Simpson for Southeast, Chuck Weaker for Region 2, uh, Aaron Downing for Region 3, for Region 4, we have no one at this time, Captain Kilsher Burton for Region 5, Rebecca Logan for Region 6, and Tom Wright for Region 7. Can I have a motion to confirm those. So moved by <laughs> Clary, Chair, I move? by Mr. Johnson. Chair, I move to us, to us, let the vote on the, uh, us. I, I have moved to Divide the question? Yep, divide the question, makes. Uh, which, how would you like to divide the question? Uh, one at a time, please. Oh, oh just in seven pieces rather than a sub -piece. okay. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, the motion. Uh, wall, nine. Does the majority favor splitting the, the question? All in favor splitting the question, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. aye. Thank you. The, 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 the request to split the vote has been, split the ballot has been rejected. Uh, back to the main motion, the confirmation of the six. And at this time, I'm also not appointing a finance chair, I didn't put it on the agenda in any way, shape, or form. We're just going to appoint the six that are holdovers. All in favor, indicate saying aye. Go back. No, I'm not going to appoint a state finance chair. Doesn't the chair elect the state finance chair? That's a great point. Welcome to me. <laughs> we'll talk about this soon. Okay. Yeah. That's why we didn't want to go there at all. Thank you for helping me remember what the logic was. Okay. We are. Okay. Okay. We've got the list made. We've got motion made, seconded. My clarification, confusion point, I apologize. Now, all in favor, indicate saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Thank you. We have confirmed six regional finance folks for the state's operations. And then we uh, need to set up a meeting in early June. Sir, before we leave your business, uh, I would like to request to have a discussion on this June meeting. On the when we get to that on the details, especially of, since it's actually a convention in disguise, uh, the call who can be there to vote. So it can be part of that agenda. Okay, let me uh, suggest that we set the date and then evolve that into the discussion of proper participation. Uh, floor is open for a suggestion of a day and date, or a day and place. Yes. June 9th here in Anchorage. Does anyone have a material conflict with June 9th and Anchorage? Can we check our calendars before we vote? Yeah, let's check. Okay. Saturday. 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 Saturday.
Saturday evening. Yeah. Let's give them two minutes to check your yeah. cell phone for your phone, please. I'm sorry. My, my turn on seconds. I can't hear. Okay. That's one of the things we got to resolve in terms of who we're inviting, in terms of how large a facility we're going to need. So let's first work through the concept of the date. And we're obviously talking about Anchorage. Now, let's. Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, just kind of, you know, we've got, uh, of course, we can two more minutes to finish up this before we uh, trans. Yeah. Okay. Would you give me a motion to extend by 10? Uh, I would give, yeah, I offer a motion to extend by 10 minutes. Second. Thank you. Is there any opposition to the motion to extend by 10? Hearing none, time is so extended. Uh, I would uh, amend the motion that moves on the floor to Fairbanks or we can Fairbanks. The weather is really nice. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's an amendment to go to Fairbanks. Second. 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 Josh, go back to the district one. No, for the center. Oh, it's beautiful in June, you guys. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's sunshine. Okay, is there any discussion? It's bright here, too. I agree. We're trying to work our way to that point. Let me allow the parliamentarian to give us some guidance as to, since we have a adjourned meeting, and a normal central committee meeting, which has at least one major item, which is to authorize redistricting activities, because we will have a map adopted by them. We will have a full slate of candidates by them. We will need to do something with somewhere between five and seven house seats, house districts, probably. Uh, I don't know if this is an appropriate time to bring this up, but it is, I think, germane to the discussion of the meeting. That is that we are normally charging fifty dollars to walk through the door and be a uh, sitting member of the central committee meeting. However, it is a continuation of the process going on there. These folks are paying you fifty dollars. Will they also be expected to uh, pay any money to participate in the committee? Normally, we have this will be a major <laughs> central committee meeting, and those have real cost to us if we can. You know, there's no way to have a free meeting that I can see. And the fee has been normally set to recover cost of, of organizing the meeting, having the meeting, and at least breaking even. And so, whether it's 40 or $50, it's going to be somewhere in that neighborhood, it'd be my guess. Because if we do this meeting, we had a February meeting, we will have a <coughs> June meeting, because we're in the convention now, and then we're obligated to have two more meetings during the course of the year, one of which is typically, typically in October, and the other one flows or around September or well, early October. Yeah, September, October. I would think definitely post primary. Post so, moose. Okay, different people have different markers. <laughs> is, is, is there a moose in the garage that's been processed and in the freezer? It's been a good, she's ready to go to Central Committee meeting. Yeah, or a committee man feels like that too, I know. Okay. <laughs> and the new vice chair. Sure. Uh, so, with those considerations, uh, I think we'd have a meeting. If we have other items that are appropriate for a normal central committee that have arisen, I know of none at this instant. Before we put the call out 20 days before the meeting, we will include those. So, if you have things to bring to my attention or otherwise, and then we can work this central committee. With attendance of anyone who is a delegate would be welcome to attend. So that means that we probably need a larger venue than, let's say, pipes or something of that nature. And I would anticipate that the delegates who are normal delegates would not pay, and we would have some central committee member cost for the, uh, the unique estimate. Does that make sense? 
and we, we would have a we would have probably a delegate meeting attached to that center committee. Well, the meeting. delegates would be would be allowed to just make this. This is a postponement of to that meeting. Of, oh, you're talking about the delegates from the state convention. Yes, okay, yes, I'm because sorry. they have, based on the guidance we have from the proletariat, they have full right to be present for the announcement of the results we just announced here. Uh, yes, Mr. Roberts. Why I would suggest we sandwich it just like we do this convention, the SEC, you know, the convention parties from the SEC. We need to separate them out that way and not have the whole SEC business taken up with delegates before we actually go to the SEC parties. Okay. 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 It was given, the official thing was postponed to quote to the SEC meeting. So the convention and the SEC meeting are sort of in conjunction, but of course, uh, as soon as it's called to order, I guess it's a special convention, so the SEC business could then wait until the convention was over if that's what you wanted to do. I think you could do that. Just a question. Yes. Would we be able to call into the city? Definitely. Because it's cost prohibitive to travel. Yes. We, we generally have folks who are not local to the meeting participate by phone, which means that we're in Fairbanks or, or Juno, or we typically go to, well, by rule, we go to Juno each February, thereabouts. We typically have the Fairbanks meeting in the fall when, when the leaves are prettier. We may flip that based on going there now. But we, the May meeting is the May June type meeting has always been sort of the goes where it needs to. It's been in many different places. How many years ago was it when we were in Valdez? Ninety six. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. I know it was ninety nine. Yeah, the I, year I, I didn't make it because I was pregnant. Good way to remember. Okay. <laughs> Just a point of clarification. Now, the folks that would be coming to this meeting, it was said just a moment ago uh, that they would be present to hear the official announcements there. I was presu presuming that there was some unfinished business that was also going to be taken care of at that time, too. Is that correct? Only if there was a quorum of the meeting. Quorum of the meeting. Of the convention. Without a quorum, I'm advised we can announce the results. And there are no proxies for a convention. No. So those people are going to have to show up 50 plus 1%. Or 50 and if we had, let's just say that we make the, I don't know what the final count is, but we'll have to consolidate the minutes. I know we got to 479. If we ever got to 480 or 81, I don't know, but that's kind of the kind of number we're talking about in terms of total attendance. So a quorum would be. 240 plus so that the one thing I, I did say is we can definitely I really believe we should do this without any question we, we said we could move the resolutions forward and we can take the time book our schedule for a significant work project to have all of the resolutions that are left since none were transacted, acted upon by the Central Committee in that meeting. And I, I don't have any count as to how many uh, there are, but I would expect we're probably dealing with at least 25 resolutions, just as a ballpark number. Reminded that the quorum criteria has two hurdles. One is 50% plus one. The other is two thirds of the districts. So since we were fortunate enough to have 40 districts in attendance, two thirds is 27 districts in attendance, which is. Can I make a point of technology? Um, part of the way we organized last week Ron Paul was with video teleconferencing and screen sharing and. Uh, with, due to the logistical cost of getting all these people out here again, I think we can solve that problem by a lot of them would opt to do a video screen. Please speak up. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm, I'm saying that, uh, you know, the, the one of the, like, one of the tools we used to organize to get so many Alaskans for Ron Paul involved is a video teleconferencing and screen sharing. So we can present anything on people's computer monitors and they can call either, a, well, it's about $3 per hour per person uh, for a toll free number, or else they have to pay their own rate to call. Like, this is actually cheaper to do a toll free number. And they have conference rooms that can handle up to 1,000 people. Um, and there are systems. Uh, some of them allow you to actually raise your hands, and it makes it orderly, actually. And people communicate. We could help facilitate that if we wanted to do that. Uh, Safe expense. Would we have a problem? It sounds like a good idea, but just thinking it through here, would we have a problem verifying the credentials of the people who are calling in versus the number coming in? Well, we do teleconferences, and how do you verify them? Um, I'm going to uh, mention we've got one minute to finish this business unless we extend it. Can we come to a conclusion? I make a motion to uh, extend it by, by 10. Uh, 10 minutes. Yeah. Right, just to, to address your point, there's a couple of ways. I I I I I I I I Thank you. Somebody second. Is there any objection? Next time. The. Uh, I think we can solve those questions at the central time. You can probably vote on that, right? Seconded motion. We've seconded the motion. There's no objection. No objection. Okay, sorry. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Is there a credentials committee that might work um, with members of the central committee to figure out all this stuff and understand this stuff with everybody? One idea is to call people back at their third line. In regards to credentialing, but not in regards to the phone issue, make sure everyone keeps their tag back to the board. Because that is a formal Can we use some mics, please? Yeah, it's really hard to hear people. Yeah, can we use some mics? There's so much noise out there. You want me to ask these people to try to hear out of the hall? That would be wonderful. Thank you. The uh, issue at the hand, we probably can give some guidance to us to work toward that goal and just see where we get. At this time, I, I'm comfortable saying we're talking about February, <laughs> June 9th in Fairbanks at a location that is adequate, and we will. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Was that was, was that actually <coughs> Fairbanks, the location? Of Fairbanks? Okay, that's, that's the amendment. That's, that's, that's the amendment. The amendment. Okay. I, then, I, if I could, uh, I'd like to speak against the amendment. Not that I dislike Fairbanks, but uh, mostly. Uh, districts are actually in the Anchorage area, and I think we stand a much better chance of it actually getting a quorum uh, because we would have a uh, greater likelihood of getting two thirds of the districts represented. Uh, Anyone else want to comment to the amendment, which is to move to Fairbanks? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to speak in opposition to the amendment because our the uh, convention that we're basically extending was in Anchorage, also, uh, for the sake of continuity, it would make sense to have the subsequent convention also in Anchorage. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the amendment to locate the, the meeting of the Central Committee with remnants of the convention in Fairbanks indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Okay, we're back to the motion that you made. Well, the amendment fails. Therefore, we're back to. Sorry. Anchorage and uh, trying to figure out exactly how to do this with enough resource base. Let's just charge the executive committee to work with anyone who volunteers to try to determine exactly how we do this and determine the venue within the next uh, 10 days. And we'll have an executive committee meeting and uh, get everybody together. And Run through this at the normal executive committee meeting date, which means the second Monday of, of next month, which is fairly soon, obviously, since today is the 28th. <coughs> yes. So the, the specific of the motion is to set the SEC meeting for June 9th in Anchorage and authorize the SEC to determine time and specific time and, and uh, venue uh, for that activity. Just a, just a matter of discussion, uh, 
question, Chair, is there actually anything, I mean, we have often uh, held it at the Millennium Hotel. Is there an objection to the Millennium Hotel for this purpose? It depends on how many, it, it, it won't work if we're going to have 300 people. Okay, all right. That's, that's the issue. They charge you. They charge you, but yeah, they do open. They do. Randy, I just I would support your suggestion. There's no way people can turn. There's too many variables to chase down, and the schools have been extremely difficult for us to work with under any circumstances of English. May as a this is my speculation. I would like to amend the motion that uh, that the uh, executive committee. Uh, uh, I'm okay with that, but I would uh, make the motion or uh, the amendment to the motion uh, that uh, if the, the facility be capable of uh, containing up to 350 to 400, 400 people um, uh, in case we have that many turn, turnouts. Can we make the motion accept that as a friendly amendment? Okay. Is there any objection to that? Can I speak to that yes. friendly emotion? Uh, you need to remember that all of these delegates here who are on the central are all of these central committee members are going to be one who's paying for this facility, not the people who are going to attend. So if we're going to rent a huge facility to be stuck with that, our fees are going to go up. And everybody else is going to enjoy that. So you need to remember that as you make that motion, please. Uh, I will respectfully withdraw the motion as <laughs> stated. <laughs> and uh, I'll, if anybody else, else has another idea, I'll let them uh, make their suggestions. Well, just to discuss the hand, we had extra money out of this, obviously, we raised funds. So uh, we have we have some excess funds, which, we don't, which we'll get report on at that next meeting. That might be Well, let me point out. There have been I'll come right back to you. Thank you. Point of information that there's been some mischaracterization of how the funds, the net funds from this activity were, were to be used. I viewed any net funds from this activity to go to our voter turnout program for, for the general election. Because these are federal dollars and we need to have federal dollars to do that. So any net, there were people suggesting that it was going to go to candidates. Money raised from the federal account cannot go to state candidates. Is different kind of money reported to the FEC, and therefore it cannot be used for state funds. But we must have federal dollars for voter turnout in the general election. Mr. Clary, Chairman Glenn Clary, District 25, I would move or amend the motion if the uh, maker of the motion would consider this friendly that we um, give the location and the time into the hands of the executive committee. That's where we are. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I'm sorry, let me come back. I apologize. I, I let Brandon hang high and dry when I made my comment. Uh, no problem. Uh, one thing that I'd ask of the executive uh, committee, though, is that there were there were uh, people that made real sacrifices to be here for this weekend, and that they really put some, some uh, thought into Evan's idea uh, for uh, uh, a remote access into the, the meeting. We will require Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Any other observations, comments? Hearing none. Mr. Chairman, point of clarification. At that June 9th meeting, will you still be the chairman? Yes. The motion is to set the SEC meeting. For June 9th in Anchorage and authorize the SEC to define a specific time and venue. All in favor of that specific motion indicate the saying aye. Any opposed? SCC, Central Committee. The Executive Committee makes the city. Yeah. Responding to something you probably only heard after all. Okay. 
Motion is passed by the body. If we have no further business, I believe I can ask the only announcements we have is thank you very, very much for taking two plus days out of your life to participate in the state convention, taking the time to be involved in the perfect and involved in district conventions and becoming a part. You're a newcomer, part of the Central Committee. If you're a returning member, I appreciate your diligence. And uh, Ms. Jocelyn has a further announcement. Of so I just thought we should also thank our parliamentarian, too, Carl. Yes. <laughs> yes, Mr. DeLogos. I moved to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Thank you.